are just finishing up vacation. And uh, attitude's really good. I'm excited about our conference, uh, the teams, and uh, I think it's, uh, it's going to be really challenging for all of us. So it uh, should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to the start here in a couple weeks. Okay, we'll take questions. we got one right here on the front, and then we'll go back in the middle way. Chris Buckner from Fan React. Um, you're known year in and year out for having one of the most progressive offensive offenses, not only in the Big 12, but in the country. What do you do during the offseason to make sure that you're always staying at the top of your game with your offense like that? We study a lot of tape from other football teams, watch a lot of NFL, watch a lot of high school, and try to gather ideas and see how they fit in our system. And um, when I was playing in high school, I had a coach that I thought did a did a great job of, of using the talent that we had in the best way possible. And uh, we try to do the same at Oklahoma State. Uh, we've been very fortunate. We've had good players. And we try to put them in a position to have success. Got a question on the aisle. Straight back in front of you, Coach. Coach Gundy, Ben Kirchwell from Bleacher Report. Uh, in 2011-13, you guys were very successful in the turnover game and forcing turnovers and probably not coincidentally had a lot of success that year winning games. What are you guys doing to prepare to get those numbers up again this year? And, uh, and you know, do you think that that's going to be a big part in, in getting back to potentially a Big 12 championship? Yes, turnovers are, are a big factor uh, with every team, I would guess. And those years we had success. Uh, we, we've gone back and worked really hard in the spring and, and tried to make an, an emphasis on forcing turnovers, getting the balls tipped, getting balls punched out on the ground, and then taking care of the ball on offense. Okay, we got a question on the front, right here in front of you to the left, Coach, and then we'll move to the back. Uh, Dean Blevins, News 9, Oklahoma City. Uh, Mike, could you ever have envisioned before the re-kick in Bedlam with all the struggles that you were experiencing in the, the club, the performance of the team, that you would be where you are right now so quickly that you and Boone are together, things are very, very positive and, and such big expectations? I don't think that you, you think about something uh, of that magnitude in, at that time. Uh, but, but we've come a long way in the last six months, uh, not only as a football team, as a coaching staff, an organization, as a university, and uh, the relationship with Mr. Pickens and our communication has been tremendous. Um, I know I feel a lot better. Uh, I'm sure he feels better. And uh, things have been really good for us over the last six or seven months. And uh, we're very proud to be where we are. Uh, and we've made some great strides, and so uh, we're excited about the future, and we're all pulling together again. We've got a question on the aisle towards the rear. Mike John Rohde with 107.7 The Franchise. Mike, what would you consider the bigger regret, trying to redshirt Mason Rudolph or not being able to, to redshirt him and pulling the trigger earlier? Well, now, now I wish I had another year uh, with him. Uh, it's really difficult to predict how uh, red shirt years will take place, uh, as, especially at the quarterback position. Uh, I think uh, most teams across the country now feel uh, very lucky to have two players at the quarterback position uh, that can, they can put out there and feel comfortable and run the offense. And uh, in our situation last year, the way we handled Mason obviously was what we thought was best for our football team. Uh, and it worked out for us in the long run, but you would always like to have the extra year, but it, uh, it, it certainly paid uh, dividends for us to play him at the time that we put him in. We got a question on the front and then we'll go back to the rear. Jason Elmquist, Stillwater News Press, over here coach. Mm -hmm. As a former quarterback yourself, how different is that second summer gonna be for Mason as opposed to coming in uh, out of high school that first summer? It's much different. He's um, uh, the leader uh, on our offense, and uh, he, he's worked hard this summer. Uh, he's shown signs of toughness, and he has to continue to push forward. And uh, it's, it's only human nature uh, to get comfortable in things we do in life, not only as a player, but in the professional world. And um, I like where he's at at this time. And uh, if he continues uh, to work, be a student of the game, distribute the ball the way he needs to, the way we ask him to, uh, depending on what style of defense that we're going against that week. Uh, toughness and leadership are, are very important in our opinion at the quarterback spot. 
And so I guess the answer to the question would be, I like uh, what he's accomplished this summer and we look forward uh, for, to him continuing to grow. We got a question on the aisle about halfway back on the left-hand side. Hey, Mike, Jenny Carlson at the Oklahoman. A lot of people picking TCU to do well in the league this year, Baylor to do well in the league this year. Why couldn't you guys win the league this year? Well, I think if we played well and take care of the ball, that, that we'll have an opportunity to win the league. Um, we, we have good young players. We've got some depth. Uh, like most years, we have to stay healthy at certain positions. Um, but we've certainly worked toward that goal from the winter conditionings through spring ball and in, in summer conditioning. And um, we like our football team. I like our coaching staff. Uh, uh, I like how the team cares about each other. Um, and as I said, we get good quarterback play, take care of the football, force some turnovers on defense, and we should have an opportunity to win the league. All the way in the rear on that same aisle. Myron Patton, Fox uh, 25, Oklahoma City. Uh, here's the back, Mike. Um, a lot of people talk about your offense that usually comes up first, Mason Rudolph, and even in the past with Whedon and some of the great players you've had. But all defense, I mean, on, on the all Big 12, you got three guys on the all uh, defensive first team media pick. Just talk about how the expectations of your defense should rise this year. We put a lot of thought in. I don't know why that's happening. That's not me, just so you guys know. <laughs> if this was my second year here, I would. you could blame it on me, but. Uh, uh, we, we put a lot of doing it again. Maybe it's, it's the, is it the coach. P? Okay. Uh, maybe it's Myron. Uh, anyway, Myron, we, we put a lot of uh, importance in, uh, in planning in our defense about four years ago. We felt like that we needed to be more competitive on defense, and uh, we built up our numbers. We uh, allotted more scholarships on that side of the ball than we did on offense, and um, I think it's paying off for us now at this time. Um, but we, uh, we have a good group on defense. I think we have some young players that um, should show up this season that uh, most people are not aware of. They've been in our program a couple years, and we feel good about what they've done up to this point. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how they start in September. Uh, we'll see if we can bring them along and get them ready to play. Uh, and, and for that stretch uh, you know, during the season uh, in conference where uh, you know usually – uh, determines where which direction teams go, um, but but that second group of guys on our defense that uh, that we've stressed over the last three or four years uh, should be the ones that help us this season. On the same aisle, Suzanne, put your hand up over there. Over here. Mm -hmm. Hi, Suzanne Halliburton with Austin American Statesman. I wanted to ask you about Mason Rudolph. He pretty much named him the starter early before spring started. Can you talk about the thought process of why you wanted to name a starter so early? And especially, I guess, when you still had three quarterbacks on the roster and why he's the number one guy. The way we ended the season, and in each uh, situation is different each year with the players. Uh, we felt like it was best for our football team to name him the starter, uh, his ability to lead, the toughness. Uh, obviously, we had success at the latter part of the season with him. Um, we're very lucky to have J.W. Walsh on our football team. Uh, J.W. is going to play. Uh, he'll be a factor in, in the success of our football team this season. Uh, but at that time, we just felt like it was best uh, for, Ma for Mason to understand that he needs to be the leader on our offense and the players uh, need to start rallying around him as their quarterback. All the way back straight by in front of you, Coach, on the uh, camera deck. Hey, Coach, John Moss, ABC in Tulsa. How have you seen Kevin Peterson evolve, uh, not only on the field with his play, but as a leader for that defense? Over the last couple seasons, um, he's, he stepped up and developed some leadership skills um, and really helped our football team in that area. Uh, he played early in his career, uh, went through a, a stage where he was uh, developing his body physically. Uh, but mentally, he, he's grown. and. Uh, has helped carry our players over the, uh, well, last summer and, and the summer before. Uh, and he's a, an example of, of what happens to young men that, that come through our program that make us very proud. Uh, they understand commitment and uh, the team concept, and, and he's certainly um, done a good job of that over the last couple of years. Question in the center section. Mike, Tim Griffin with the San Antonio Express News. What potentially can Chris Carson give you guys on offense? And is he as good as it seems like the reports have him being pegged? 
I didn't hear the last part other than Chris Carson. Well, Tim, we don't know yet. Um, uh, what I can tell you is he's done very well in, in summer conditioning. Uh, his attitude's been uh, terrific. Uh, his work habits, uh, his testing, his speed, uh, his footwork, uh, all the things that we would want uh, to see in a, in a back that, that's going to be successful at this level. He's shown us to this point, but the most important is playing in the game, durability, toughness, vision, making plays, teamwork, uh, the things that are the most difficult. Uh, but up to this point, he's showing us that he can help our football team. Um, we thought Rennie Childs had a good spring and has had a great summer. And I think Chris has contributed to that. Um, when we've had success at Oklahoma State, not only in the win-loss column, but on offense, we've had um, a lead back, and then we've had another back that's been pretty, pretty good. And so we need those guys to really play well for us, and, uh, and hopefully cl uh, Chris can come through. We got a question on the far left-hand side on the aisle. Amanda, back behind you. Barry Trammell with the Oklahoman. Mike, you ever been to Mount Pleasant, Michigan? I know you're worried about what might be there when you get there. I have not been to Mount Pleasant, Michigan. I've been to a lot of places in Michigan uh, and have been there quite a bit since my family's from there, but have not been to Mount Pleasant. What about the second part? Worried about what's there when you get there in terms of in sort of a northern, northern Troy. I don't think that uh, that worry is the best word. As a coach, you're always concerned um, playing the uh, first game on the road. And uh, I would think they would be very excited for Oklahoma State to come into town. But uh, it's a challenge that, that we need to meet as a team and as a coaching staff uh, in order for us to to reach our goals and have success, win games, win a conference championship. Uh, you have to be able to overcome um, situations you got to play well on the road as we all know um, so we're we're looking forward to the game and uh, we're certainly taking it very serious as a coaching staff and as a football team got a question on the aisle all the way in the back on the left side Myron Patton again Oklahoma City uh, Mike in the past I think people know about how you felt about scheduling didn't like certain games you got Oregon State coming up here the next few years, a home and home. Have you changed your viewpoint on how you want to schedule, especially when it's, it's t been talked about in the Big 12 about everybody needing to beef up their schedules and things of that nature? I feel the, very, uh, the same way. Uh, I, I think that uh, we have a good plan at Oklahoma State. I've, uh, I've put a lot of thought into what um, our coaching staff thinks is best for Oklahoma State. And um, I'm comfortable with the schedule that we have over the next five or six years. I think we're scheduled all the way up through maybe six years. Uh, I think it's really good for our football team and good for our school. Uh, I still am a, uh, a, a strong supporter of a Big 12 conference and each school plays uh, each team. And, um, and I think that's a, a sign of strength in our league. I think right before uh, Ohio State, uh, beat Wisconsin by a large margin we had a good chance to get two teams in and uh, so I don't I don't know that we need to overreact uh, and I think that our conference is strong I have a lot of confidence in in our um, league office uh, Commissioner Bowlesby and in the in the staff and the direction they're taking us and that we'll make the right decisions and for that reason um, coach Holder myself uh, we need to make the right decisions in our scheduling. And, and I think that we've done a good job of up through the next five or six years. Question on the front left. Dean Blevins, News 9, Oklahoma City. <clears throat> Mike, you know the quarterback position as well as anyone. You and K.O. were great players. You've coached really good players, Zach and Brandon and, and others. Where does uh, Mason stack up? and? Uh, what are the things that, that, that make him who he is? We're going to find out, Dean. I think at this time next year, we could probably get a more accurate answer. He's played in three games. The things that I said earlier about him, we feel strongly. 
uh, it's important to us at Oklahoma State that our quarterbacks are, are tough, durable, uh, and they're gritty and they're good leaders. Uh, I think he's shown signs of that. Um, the time he puts in the classroom, studying, understanding how to distribute the ball, take what the defense gets him is going to make all the difference. And we see it across the country, certainly in the Big 12 Conference and at any, every level of football. If your quarterback plays well, it gives you a chance to have a really good season. If your quarterback is average or you get into a situation where you're playing multiple quarterbacks from an injury standpoint, then it's, it's difficult to have a lot of success in most cases. So um, at this time next year, um, if he plays throughout the season and um, we go the direction that I think our football team can go, I could give you a really accurate answer. Right now it's just way too early. We got a question on the aisle on the left side. Mike over here. Mm -hmm. uh, Jenny Carlson from the Oklahoma again. In general terms, quarterbacks that have been successful in spread offenses, you see some that are Brandon Whedon, stand in the pocket guys. You see guys that run around a lot more. Do you feel like there are any characteristics, either physical or mental, that help quarterbacks be most successful in those air raid spread offenses? I think that uh, the intangibles that different quarterbacks bring to the table, you, you can go back over the last five or six years in Big 12, we've been very fortunate that we've had um, not only some good quarterbacks, but some great ones. Multiple first round picks, guys that are taken at the first pick of the draft. And they, they're different in their own way and they have intangibles. Um, like Boykin at TCU, uh, there's times he'll make really good throws and there's times he'll take off on a quarterback draw and then they'll run a little option and, uh, and he'll scramble around and find a, a receiver downfield. Uh, his way of success is much different than Brandon Whedon's. As you mentioned, Brandon might move in the pocket and then uh, just throw a dart 45 yards on a line and, and hit a receiver uh, much different than another player. So it's the intangibles and their ability to make a play and overcome um, one of two things. One, a poor play call, or two, um, a missed assignment with the other 10 guys on the field. And in our opinion at Oklahoma State, that's what separates quarterbacks. We had a question all the way in the back, in the middle. John Hoover, Tulsa World. Uh, hey, Mike. Um, hey, John. Vili Levini posted on Facebook uh, earlier today that he's out for the season, had surgery. That's a position that uh, you guys can't really afford, I guess, with the people that you lost to, uh, to lose a projected starter. Can you kind of describe what that means for you guys? Well, it's always difficult when you, uh, you have a player that's injured um, just because they put so much hard work and time into uh, getting prepared for the season. And as a coach, it's uh, one of the most difficult things to swallow. Uh, you have a young man that's uh, has done everything we've asked him to do and, and put a lot of time in, and he's come to a bump in the road. And, um, but the next guy has to make plays. Um, unfortunately, we're in a sport where um, there are injuries. Uh, but uh, that's why we have uh, 132 guys on our team. That's why we continue to coach and work and develop young players. Uh, and so the next guy will have to step up and make some plays. Uh, we're not as experienced and we don't have as much depth at that position. But uh, there's certain things that we can control and that's certainly not one of them. So um, Philly is, uh, will be back with us uh, at some point. We're looking forward to getting him back.